turn in turn your Bibles to the book of John, John 6, we we'll to study a little bit this morning. And we want to start our reading in chapter 6, verse 28, and uh, we would like to say again this morning, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord, and I dearly uh, enjoy the, the blessings of the Holy Spirit this morning as we at our song service, and uh, uh, I'm just thankful that I could be here this morning. I'm sorry for those that are not able to be here, but uh, we just, <coughs> just hold them up to the Lord and uh, <coughs> feel blessed. Amen. Uh, this morning, I would uh, uh, ask you to try to uh, pray for me as I try to read some from the Bible and. And make a few comments, and uh, I need your I need your prayers uh, always, and uh, I need to, to say this morning how that uh, you know this makes when it, it's empty like I mean it's not as many here it makes you feel uh, it makes you kind of lonesome you know <coughs> just be be much in prayer for those that are out uh, I know I know they're I know they're I know they're not feeling well because they're not here. So remember these things. And all right, in the book of John, chapter 28, we are chapter 6, verse 28. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the work of God? And these were the these were the the Israelites, the Jewish people that had seen all of the miracles that Jesus had had performed and he'd raised the dead and he had healed the sick uh, and he'd done all of these things and uh, uh, it, Jesus uh, Jesus answered and said unto them in verse 29 this is the work of God that you believe on him whom hath sent whom he hath sent he Amen. was standing before them and he was uh, uh, in other words he said you believe on me right because if you look back uh, uh, people uh he's talking to the the crowd here and uh remember some of the things that i've done some of the works that i've done he wasn't boasting of himself because he was giving god all the glory but he was re reminding them of the things that they that he had, they had seen done and they and then in verse 30 they said unto therefore unto him what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee what doest thou work and of course the only thing that they uh they could remember was Moses. Mm -hmm. And they remembered all the works that Moses had done. And uh, they didn't even uh, take to consider, right, consider, consider that John the Baptist, there in chapter 1, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Amen. He identified him. He baptized him. He identified him. And uh, these, people, these people just couldn't grasp these things. That, uh, and they couldn't overcome the thoughts that... Uh, Jesus was going to tell them some things here uh, about the works and all of this. So he says here in verse uh, in verse uh, 31, he says, Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And so uh, again, they're, they're, they're pushing Jesus aside and they're, they're going back to Moses and they're saying, Moses right. did this, Moses did this, Moses did this. But the, you don't never hear any of them say, well, uh, I seen you when you raised that dead man. I right. seen when you raised that crippled man. I seen this and I seen that, and, and they don't give him any credit. And the thing of it is, this morning, uh, the work for salvation don't give Jesus Christ no credit neither. Amen. And so this morning we need to think about who we need to give credit to, and and it's it's Jesus Christ and Him alone. And he's He's going on to tell them. In verse 32, then, said, then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread. And of course, they've been given, then Moses fed the children, Moses fed the children for 40 years. No, he says here, he says, But my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Amen. And he, again, is talking of himself, and he's saying, I am the true bread. 
And he said, you need to understand this morning, and we need to understand, and I need to understand this morning, that it's Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Amen. There's, there's nothing else this morning that we can put before him, because he is the bread of life, and if we don't partake of that bread, we're, uh, we're doomed. And he says here, I, I, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven Amen. and giveth life unto the world. And so this morning it it may it was just as plain, it should have been just as plain as the those on their faces that who he was talking about. He was talking about none other than himself. Amen. He wasn't talking about Moses, he wasn't talking about Abraham, he wasn't talking about nobody but Jesus Christ himself. And so uh, they they are coming up with all of these questions. Well, what works do we need to do? What do we need to do? And always, always trying to catch him in some way and and uh, and say that you're wrong. So here he said here in, in verse 4, notice there, 34. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Well, now he's there before them, telling them where the bread is at, what the bread is, who the bread is, and they are saying, you, you give us the bread. Well, he had already, he's already offered himself. He's, he's already been identified uh, by John the Baptist. And so Jesus, in verse 35, Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. Amen. And that this morning is a hard matter for a fleshly soul or a fleshly body to understand. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just minor impossible because there's no there's no love in this flesh that we have as sin and and when someone come up before you and says I'm that living bread well that's the first thing they want to discard it but no mm-hmm. sure and, and he says he that cometh to me shall never hunger well they could not grasp that because the thing of it was they was talking about thinking about their own fleshly belly and uh, never getting hungry, and they, they got hungry quite often. But he said here, He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So he's, he's, hitting, he's hitting the two things that, that, uh, uh, that would draw attention uh, uh, to them by using their fleshly body by hungering and thirsting. And he said here, and, But I, uh, I say unto you, that ye also have seen me and believe not. So that's, there's where the rub comes. People can be told about Jesus Christ. People can, people can see things go on in this world that had to be a miracle, that had to be done of God, and, and, and they still cannot accept the fact that Jesus Christ came to this world lived a perfect life, died on the cross of Calvary for our sins, and was risen and taken to heaven. They, they can't understand that because right. it's the flesh hinders. Now, if there's something, that, if the Holy Spirit does not come and talk to that spirit, or if God does not call that spirit, or if God does not choose that spirit, listen, it will never in this world right. understand it. And, and, and so this morning, we need to think upon this, this very, very simple little thing that Jesus is telling them this morning. It's very simple. He's the bread of life. Amen. He's the only one that can, he's the only one that we can look to. He's the only one that we can <clears throat> look at who lived that perfect life and that we should, we should set our, ourselves like him and try to act like he did and try to be like him and try to trust in him for our salvation and if we can't listen we need we need as brother says to check out our salvation because there's something wrong and here <clears throat> notice again in, in verse 37 <clears throat> excuse me i'll get this out in a minute all that the father give giveth me shall come to me amen now that's that's that is for sure. But the thing of it is, nobody don't know who's coming and who ain't. Right. As far as uh, we can look at people and say, hey, I believe they're a Christian. Uh, we can look at people and say, well, uh, I've got some doubts about him. Listen, 
we don't know. Right. Amen. This, this flesh, this flesh that is is overpowering us and, and making us think these things. And listen, it's not our place to do that. It, right. We should we should say if if we see something that's wrong in a person's life, we need to pray for them. Uh, if we have the opportunity, we need to be a witness for them. If we see a person that is trying his best to serve the Lord, we need to encourage that person. Amen. Because they need encouraging. Because listen, when you're when you're when you're trying to serve the Lord, you always have that enemy, the devil, to interfere with you. Amen. And every time that you can encourage a person that is trying to serve the Lord, and you know this morning when, when people are doing things for their own self to get pats on the back or when they're doing it for the, to serve the Lord, you know the difference. If you're a Christian, you know it because Amen. your spirit bears witness with their spirit. And so you need to encourage <coughs> them and say, brother, sister, uh, I love you and I'm praying for you. And that is one of the most helpless things in the world this morning is, is when you can tell someone that because, listen, your spirit bears witness with their spirit and there is a, it's just like, it's just like two magnets put together mm -hmm. and just come together. And so here in verse, <clears throat> verse uh, 38, he says, For I came down not from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me that of all which he had given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Amen. Now this, this is talking about the ones that was chosen <coughs> in the halls of eternity or in eternity or before eternity. I don't know. But they were chosen of God according to the, to the scripture. God chose who he would choose. Right. Amen. And he gave this information to Jesus Christ. He let Jesus know these things. And of course, I mean, they are, they're of one spirit and they knew. And, and so here he says here, uh, he said in, uh, in, in verse uh, 39, he says, And I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. Amen. And I will raise him up at the last day. And so, you know, he put a, he put a great emphasis on this here because 39 and 40, you read them, what do they say? I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day. Then look at that in 40, and I will raise him up at the last day. And so this morning, we can be assured this morning, if we're, if we're saved, we're going to be the first to go. Amen. We're going to go to be with the Lord, and we're going to stand before the Lord, and we're going to be uh, given rewards. Not to see if we're lost or saved, but for the rewards. And that's, that's what that's all about. But listen, this is, this is, this is our assurance this morning. This is our assurance that this is not a fairy tale. Amen. This is not just something or something that some somebody made up five thousand years ago and he thought it sounded good or something like that. But listen, it's the truth. Amen. And we this morning need to understand that that this is going to happen. And just as sure as you're put out here in the ground, you're going to come back. Amen. Out of that ground. And if you don't, you're going to be changed between here and there. Amen. And so this morning you can you can you can be assured that this is going to happen, and it's like I say I I, I think so many people say well that's just a fairy tale and, and and when you die you're dead and how in the world could anybody come back alive? But it's our bread and butter, Amen. It's our sugar and our cream. It's our it's the truth. People. Amen. And you can you can you can you can take it you can take it with you and you can use it. And you can put it in your pocket and you can keep it and you can carry it around with you and enjoy it because it's true. And this is what God said here. And in the, in the, in the notice in, in verse, what they did, in verse 41, the Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. 
Now notice that he told them there in 35, he said, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life, and he that cometh to me shall never hunger or thirst. So they are murmuring about him being the bread of life. Now they want to go back, they want to go back to this thing with Moses and the and the manna and all of this. But now listen. And they said, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he said, I came down from heaven? And so again, they didn't understand. They didn't understand how that Jesus uh, became a child. They didn't understand how that he was uh, brought into this world. They didn't understand that. They seen Joseph and his father. In fact, the business, they called him illegitimate and, and, and things of this nature. But listen, that ain't, that they didn't understand the, the, the whole story. So Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me. Again, here he's, 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 he's helping us. Except the Father which hath sent me, draw him. Amen. And I will raise him up at the last day. And he just sends this, he sends this message over and over in this chapter here. And listen, he wants us, he wants us to really get this thing. And so he, he's, he just keeps telling us. In verse 45, and it is written in the prophets. And they shall be all taught of God, every man there that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. In, in verse 65 it says, notice, And he said, Therefore say I unto you that no man can come to unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. Amen. So there's nothing, there's nothing this morning, and, and, it's, and you said this is old school, yes it is. But we need to we need to we need to latch onto this and we need to have it to stick on us like stink on others. Mm -hmm. And listen, we need to know this that, that this is the truth and this is the only thing this morning that makes any difference with us because he says here he says and I told you that no man can come to me except it were given unto him of my father. Now back in back in the lesson here in verse uh, 44, he says, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. And it is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. And I've read this, but I won't read it again. Of God, every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Amen. <clears throat> Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God. He hath seen the Father. Now again, they don't realize. They don't. I, I don't think they understand. Of course, they don't understand a whole lot. But I don't understand this morning. Uh, I believe they don't understand when he was telling them this that, that they knew he was talking about himself. Right. I don't. I don't think they understood. I don't think right. they just because listen to them. Listen to what they're doing. They're murmuring. They they're they're in disbelief even of the of uh, what he had already told them and and all the miracles that he'd done and 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 remembering. Uh, and I'm sure some of them here were seeing, uh, seeing that when John was baptized and he baptized Jesus and, G and, and John pointed them out and they still, <clears throat> they're still murmuring and they're still in a, in a lost condition. And he said here in verse 40, 47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Amen. And it's, it's just as true as, as he says when he says, and I'll raise him up in the last day. Because, listen, we will never die. That is our souls. Amen. Our souls will never die. It will, it's going to go in, it's going to go into eternity, and it's going to go into a heavenly home, or it's going to go into a lake of fire. Right. But it's not going to die. Because when he blew that breath of life into that body of Adam, it was an everlasting life, and it will not die. And so this morning, uh, he says here that, uh, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. And he's talking about spiritually. And he's saying, hey, that soul that I, that that soul that I give you, and, that, that, and, one, and I called it back to me, listen, it's not going to die. And that one that I didn't call, it's not going to die either. So we have an everlasting life uh, in the spirit. I am, the, in verse 48, I am the bread of life. And of course, over here, he had, they had talked about the bread of life. In th verse 35, he said, I am the bread of life. 
and he that comes to me shall never hunger. Here again in verse 48, he says, I am the bread of life. Your father did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. And he's saying, I'm the bread of life. So they did not, they, that, that bread that was there was not him. That, that was a manna that was sent for them to, uh, to live on. But now notice, it was a type of, and he said, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. <clears throat> this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread. He Amen. Said, this is the bread. This is the bread, people. And so, so this morning, so this morning, this is what this is what we need to understand is we need to believe. We need to believe that Jesus Christ is the bread of life. Amen. And and what he's saying here, what he had wrote down, is true. There's there's no false about it. And he said, you 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 can depend on this. And he said. I, in verse 51, I am the bread of life which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Amen. Spiritually, he's talking about the soul. And then, of course, uh, he said, and I will give, uh, let, me, let me get back here. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this, this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world. They didn't understand this morning what he was talking about. He was going to the cross of Calvary, and he was going to die. He's going to shed his blood for the sins of the world. And these, sin, these, these sins cannot be uh, covered without the blood of Christ. And he, he went there with the intention of, of covering the sins of the world. And so many did not ever eat that bread. Right. Never did except that he was the, the bread of life. And so he says, I will give, I will give for the life of the world. And he said, I will give my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore <coughs> strove among themselves, murmuring and talking among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? See, there's no understanding. Right. There's no understanding, and and that's the same way this morning. Uh, when when a person when a person hears the word of God preached, and the spirit and, and, and he he can't understand it until such time as the Lord speaks to that soul, Amen. gives him an ear to hear that, then he can understand it. But these people never didn't understand that Jesus Christ was talking to them about his flesh as, right. uh, and on, dying on the cross of Calvary for them. So the, the, they, they, st so they stole about, uh, and, and argued about this. And he said here in verse 54, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood sounds nasty. That's what the, uh, the spirit that don't understand that's what the spirit that don't really grasp this. And I say, oh, that's stinky. That's nasty. Listen, Jesus Christ is trying to save them. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is trying to tell them the truth. And he says, whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. And so this, this partaking of this flesh, eating this flesh and drinking this blood, Listen, it ain't observing the Lord's Supper. It ain't doing this. It ain't doing that. But it's it's accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior and believing on the works that He done and that He died on the cross of Calvary for you. That's partaking of His flesh and drinking His blood because His blood came out of His side mm -hmm. and covered your sins. And it's the same way you're saturated with that blood and you're covered. Your sins are covered from God's eyes. He cannot see your sins no more. God cannot, because God cannot look upon sin. Right. And so He don't, when He looks at you, and when He and Jesus are there together, and He looks upon on this world, He sees that blood, and Jesus Christ says, "That's mine." And he does not see any. He does not see anything in that old flesh this morning. But listen, one day this old flesh will die, and it will rot, and it will come forth glorified. And it will be just like that spirit, and he'll see a glorified body and spirit, and you'll be with him in eternity. And uh, it's it's so wonderful this morning to know 
that we have this and that we can read this and that we, if, if we can't understand it, we can find places to go to and have people to, to uh, tell us and to talk to us and to read to us and, and get through to us and pray with us. And we can. We that, are, that don't understand this can understand. See, it won't sound like a dirty, uh, nasty thing of eating and drinking blood and eating <coughs> food. But it will sound like something sweet to our ears and listen Amen. to bring comfort to our hearts and our souls, and we can be saved. So this is uh, this is what I wanted to read to you this morning. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, there's so much more to, to, to this. But anyway, uh, he goes on and tells some more about it. this: is the bread of life which came down from heaven, uh, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. And of course, they wanted to, they wanted to rub this up. Manna in Jesus' face and say that's that's what we that's what we look for. Moses was the one, but mm -hmm. he he explains to them that he was the bread of life. Amen. And, uh, so this is our lesson for the day, and I hope that it's, uh, uh, it'll ring a bell with you and it'll encourage your hearts and help you some way to to live a little closer to the Lord. Thank you all so much.